Abelia so in Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Whew. I want to leave us with that instruction even as we um, wrap up the Mount Up session. This is something powerful. Many times um, people come to ask us, oh, I don't know how to focus. I don't know how, you know, when I'm praying my mind. And it's very possible. It's e I think it's easier when you're praying in tongues. But you have to learn the discipline of the mind. You have to learn the discipline of the mind. When you engage in, in, in spirit, spiritual activity like that, then you're not careless about what's in your mind. Don't let that time be a time that you are putting strength into a situation you don't want. Rather, have the picture of who you are. When you are strengthened by the Lord and have overcome that situation, hold that image so that when all three levels of you are praying, you are praying the same thing. You are praying the same thing. You mount up with the right image, not with the image of your broken state. So I hope that, that that meant something for someone. It's a discipline you practice. From time to time, your mind will drift, you go somewhere, you bring it right back to the image of you. Running businesses across countries, you bring it back to the image of you. Managing her family, surrounded by four children, you bring it back to the images of you. Who's leading crusades, who's leading, you know, ministries around the world that's what you need to be looking at you look at who you are in that state and you keep it in your spirit you keep it in your mind as you mount up Shade is praying and the picture in her mind ought to be of somebody who is leading worship globally massively on crusade grounds bringing many to the knowledge of Christ Bringing many to the presence of God, even as she opens her mouth to begin to worship. Madame Lola is envisioning herself as somebody who, before she has opened her mouth, demons are flying out of people because that is who she truly is. Madame Akudo knows that when she opens her mouth, as she begins to speak, the prophetic word she's given, they are spot on because that is who she truly is. So that's who she has in her mind when she comes to Mount Up. Not somebody who is trying to figure out, okay, you know, oh, my shop, oh, no, that's not, that's not the person that, that comes to Mount Up. You behold that image. That as you are out there delivering prophecy, bringing people out of bondage, you have, you know, a, 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 a chain of businesses across the country. You hold that image. You hold that image. What is that thing that Satan is mocking you with? You better take the right image. You better take the right image. The image of all your children doing well, well behaved, serving the Lord. The image of your business thriving to where you are sponsoring other businesses. You are, you are leading these initiatives where they give you know, funding to smaller businesses that are just starting. That's who you, you, you look at yourself. That's, how you, you, that's the image you hold of yourself. I don't know why it came strongly, but I think that there's someone on the call this morning who has not learned to discipline their mind to see what God sees because you are changed into the same image that you behold. So don't come into an environment that is so spiritually charged, holding an image of yourself so small. That is the version of you that gets endorsed. So you better pick the right image. You better pick the right image. Madame Romina, you see yourself running a fleet of food businesses across Nigeria. As, listen, do not make things small in your mind. Do not make things small in your mind. Let God tell you he can't handle it. But don't try to size him up. Don't try to size him up. Let God tell you that, okay, you know what, this one is too much. My power did not, did not reach that side. And you, you, let it be that that's what he will have to tell you, if that's possible. But don't size him up. Think about who you are when you have gained strength, when you are mightily helped by the Lord to where you have become strong. That's who you carry with you when you start mounting up. So thank you all for joining the Mount Up session this morning. Again, Madam Ola, I apologize for hijacking your session. I just had been feeling scared in the beginning of the week that I needed to um, just, I don't know, say a thing or two on the Mount Up session. and then somehow that's how I ended up actually taking the Mount Up session from your hands. But I apologize for that. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Um, and God bless us. We have moved into the family altar. So we're streaming, actually. We've been on YouTube for the last few minutes. Um, <clears throat> so please grab the link. Share the link with a friend. Share the link with family. Put it on your status. 
We might be here, we may be a small group, but understand that when I mount up, when I'm praying, this is more of a global prayer movement. This is, this is a global movement of women. This is what you have to see. It's a global movement of women across the world taking up their places powerfully in God, effecting change in the societies, in countries, in industries, everywhere. So please, let's just <laughs> be guided with the right image. But yes, back to the family altar. Grab the link. We're streaming already. Send it to your friends and family. We're going to take some prayers this morning based on what the Spirit of God put in my heart for us as I was praying earlier in the week and seeking His face on what we needed to do. And what Madame Lola said was, was kind of spot on because it seemed that the Holy Spirit was talking to me because of someone who maybe was getting weary, right? I've been praying. I've been bringing requests. I've been trusting. I've given sacrifice. I've done this. I've done that. All of that. I've ticked all the boxes. But it seems that my prayer is not being answered. And the Holy Spirit, I was, actually, I was in a different experience. So I was in a different encounter when suddenly I heard a voice from in front of me saying, we're going to raise prayers against unforgiveness because it holds up things that belong to people. If I can find exactly the way that I wrote it, I want to actually read it out that way. Okay, yes. It says, we're going to raise prayers against unforgiveness as it holds up things that are yours i just heard those words directly in front of me from son and that was the extent of it we're going to pray against unforgiveness because it holds up things that are yours so there are some of us who have been here praying prayer points from the beginning of the year from last year from the last three years and as we go before god as we mount up as, as i as i seek god this is the light in the lamp that Madame Lola was uh, talking about earlier that he gives. So I, I'm holding it, but I don't understand how we're going to move. I don't understand what we're going to do. But as I stay before God and as I mount up and I behold him, then he gives me insight. And that's what we're working with. I never want us to be a group that gathers just because we have something on the calendar. I find it to be my core, my basic fundamental responsibility to tarry before the Lord. I owe it to God, I owe it to everyone who gathers here to find out exactly what the Spirit of God will have us do. And today, we're going to pray against unforgiveness. Some of us might be here thinking, well, I'm a very soft and a gentle person, so this one doesn't necessarily impact me. Well, if that's how you feel, then that's good. Just pray for the others that are needing grace, okay? Pray for the others that are needing grace. So the prayers are going to be simple this morning. I think everybody understands what it means to um, hold on forgiveness against people. That's what we're going to pray against. So let's uh, take a look at scripture. Um, we'll start with Matthew chapter 6. And we're actually going to start here, but we'll have to come back to it because we're going to deal with the second part. Verse 12 is very clear. It says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Other translations, it says <clears throat> to forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So if you look at uh, 14, verse 14, it says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. I always find that statement interesting because it does not say um, when the Lord forgives you, you will be abounding with grace to forgive other people as well. No, no. And when you look at the entire template of the Lord's prayer that was given to us, this is the one prayer that is a dependent Everything else is that kingdom come, that will be done. Give us our daily bread, you know. That's it. Like, that's what, what the whole prayer is. But we get here, that's the only one that is tied to something else. Forgive us as we forgive. That is that. That us securing forgiveness from the Lord is also dependent on us learning and being able to forgive other people. So the Lord will help us this morning as we pray. Because there are many of us who have to put this principle into practice today. It's not going to be something that you keep reading. It's not just going to be something that you keep seeing. It's going to be something that we're putting into practice today. And I want you to put your heart in it. Because what will happen is that the Holy Spirit will begin to highlight things that have been locked away in your mind. Locked away in your mind that you did not know were still there and influencing your behavior. Influencing your feelings towards people. I was listening to a man of God yesterday and he was saying something along those lines. He says, we can never let the things that people do to us change who he knows us to be. But some of us don't realize that the, 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 the form of us right now that we're operating in is an altered form. It's a mutated form. It's the form of us that came out of a season of unforgiveness. It's the form of us that came out of situations of hurt, situations of betrayal, and now we are a different state of ourselves. 
So we're going to pray this morning because, like I said, I think it's pretty clear. You know where you are. And if there are things that you have even in your mind forgotten, you see, that's the thing about the mind. It may not be in your conscious state where you're thinking about this person all the time, but the thing has registered something in your subconscious that drives the way you relate to people, that drives the way you see people. And when that matter, if that matter ever gets brought up, it is so heavy on your heart that you, not, you literally feel a physical reaction because of how upset you are at that person, at that thing. Your pain is valid, but what I'm trying to tell you this morning is what the Lord told me. It holds up things that are yours. So your pain is valid, but why not hand it to the Lord? Why not hand it to the Lord? So we're going to come before God, laying our hearts bare before him, and saying, Father, indeed, this person, that person, this situation, that situation hurts me, but I'm coming before you to lay it down at your feet and releasing these people, releasing these issues, releasing these things from my mind. Let's just go on and pray this morning. Lord, grace, grace to forgive. Let every aspect of me that is trapped, that is in bondage, do unforgiveness. Let it be released today in the name of Jesus. Let's go on and pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to keep praying along this line, but I want to share something. You know, I've read this thing in the Bible, right? I see it there and how, you know, we shouldn't harbor unforgiveness and all of that. But I'm telling you that it was only in the last maybe couple years of my life that I saw what it really means for a person to be in bondage of unforgiveness. It is real. It is real. It is real. I've seen a person who cannot get up and actually move their life forward 
because they are in unforgiveness. And this is somebody who, in their minds, they think that they are trying to move forward. They tell themselves that they are healing. But, so you ask them, like, okay, so um, the, you, said, you said this thing happened and this thing happened and it hurt you. And, so do you want to let it go? And they say no. They're like, no, because this person hurt me so bad, because this person hurt me so bad. And I'm telling you this thing, I'm not joking. This person can move forward. Not that, oh, they are doing well in life, but they are still, you know, a bitter person. No, 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 no. They can't. They can't even get up out of bed and go find a job. You know why? Because it starts with your will and then later Satan empowers that thing within you. Satan empowers it and he, he makes it into a cage that you yourself you are now locked in. I, I could not believe it. I could not believe it. It's almost as though the last few years of my life, it's like Jesus is like, you will, you will see what the real life is and you will see how real scriptures are. And I feel like that's really what my experience has been. This person, all of their mates have moved on with life. They have moved forward. They have advanced so much. But this person is exactly where they were when this matter overtook them a few years ago, maybe about three years ago. Every attempt, every effort. So initially, we're like, okay, let's do deliverance, let's all of that. But we got to a point that the Holy Spirit made it clear. They are delivered, though. If it's that you are trying to break them out of, oh, family, this, that, that, that one has been taken care of. But the one cage they are still in is this cage of unforgiveness. They have allowed Satan, they have collaborated with him to build it to their perfect size and trap them in it. So now they can't move forward. And this is why I want us to please dig deep when we talk about this thing. Someone has to mute, please. There's someone on the line who needs to mute. We have to dig deep when we, when we think about these things. So now this person is in their 20s. Please, if everybody can mute, that would be good. This person is in their 20s. But when they talk about the things that, you know, you know, they're holding on to that made them hurt, they're talking about things that happened before they even turned the age of 10. They're talking about things that happened when they were, were I don't know how old, you know, in primary school. Do you see how, how crafty Satan is? You are now maybe almost 20 years past that situation, but that thing lodged something in your heart and you can't come out. And it's so sad because every time they start to, you know, try to turn a corner, they try to, it's almost like as though they are coming through, they are coming out. Suddenly, Satan throws those things back at them again. Oh, is it not this person that this, is it not this person? And that person stays stuck. And it's almost, it literally like a loop. You know how it is if you're playing a cassette that like, it just, like it's skipping. So it's like just saying, that's how the thing is for that person. They can't see outside of that. They keep repeating that. They keep saying it over and over again. It's painful to watch. But you see, there's, this is the thing is, until you yourself make a decision to let this thing go, even God cannot pry it out of your hands. You yourself have to make a decision to let it go. So is this something a dear friend did to you? Is this something that a parent did to you when you were young? Oh, my parents didn't pay as much attention. If they would have been paying attention, this wouldn't have happened. If they would have been paying more attention to me, this wouldn't have happened. Oh, if my parents did this, that wouldn't have happened. Oh, if my father did that, if my mother did this, or oh, my siblings, what is it that is in your heart, that is affecting your fellowship with God, that is affecting your ability to receive things that belong to you? Why? Because each time you raise up your voice in prayer, and you try to make a case for why this thing should happen for you or that thing should happen, your adversary, the enemy, is there to accuse you. Oh, is it not this person that is this? Oh, is it not this person that is that? We cannot be taken um, on our ways. We have to be aware of who our enemy is. He's a person that looks to collect cases. He's the one that will create the situation and he will be the same person to use that same situation against you. So we don't want to be ignorant. Like I said, I want you to think deep. You know, for some of us, you will, you, you will know what I'm talking about. From time to time, you have dreams that revolve around this thing. It's almost like something that even when you're telling yourself, oh, I've let it go. From time to time, you still have these dreams that take you back to that place. And once you wake up, it just changes your mood. It changes, you, 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 I don't know, your outlook that day or for the next few days. It is still in your heart. It is still in your heart. So you need to p bring it before God today. Because I don't know about you, but I don't care to have my things held up. Because I can't let someone go who 
they don't even have any bearing on my life at this point. The person that hurt you is likely not in your life anymore. Maybe the person is dead. They can't even remember this thing happened. But Satan has used this thing to build a cage that locks you in. So we're going to open our mouth. And think about those situations that happen that hurt us. It seems like a small thing, but I'm telling you that this is such a powerful key. And when Shade leads prayers and she raises this thing a lot of the times, it's almost as though, okay, yeah, forgive me. No, this is true. You have to see what a person's life looks like when it is in bondage due to unforgiveness for you to understand why prayers like this are important. And many times you have to keep praying it so that you yourself, eventually you get to where you, you truly let it go. Because you know it's one thing to come before God when we gather to pray like this and say, oh, I've let this person go. I've let this thing go. But in your heart, if they mention that person's name, all your heart just squeezes like a ball. Your face just turns. Your stomach is not right anymore just because that person's name was mentioned. Or something concerning that person came up. And, you know, you know the funny thing is the other day someone was asking me a question. Actually, <laughs> it was Shadi asking me a question about something. It was a simple question. And she ended it with, have you, you know, encountered something or someone like this before? And I started to respond to her. And my answer that should have been a simple yes or no. When I tell you I started to type. I started to type. I started to type. And by the time I finished typing, I was like, wait, did I really type this entire essay here? When she asked this question of, have you been in this situation? Or have you dealt with a person like this before? And I realized that I'm typing this thing because it's, it, I, I still, the thing is still in my mind. Left to me, I'm forgiven the person. I don't even care about what you know they're doing or whatever, right? But I realized that the reason why I'm even having the energy to write all this story is because somehow, although I t- I'm telling, I've told myself that I've let the person go, that thing that they did is still there. It's almost like trauma that you, 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 is, you are still carrying it around with you. But when you forgive a person, you don't just release them, you release every th- deposit that what they did brought onto your life. So we're going to pray this morning that Father, I forgive XYZ person, but not just that, as a result of the forgiveness I have offered to them today, let every deposit that was made on my life as a result of this situation that, you know, I was in with them or because of them, let every deposit that Satan was able to sneak into my life as a result of the hurt, the unforgiveness I felt towards that person, let those things be dislodged from me today in the name of Jesus. As we take this prayer, some of us will literally feel like a weight is coming off of us. Some of us will literally feel lighter where we are. Some of us will literally feel a hand that is touching touching us almost as though it is taking things off of us. So let's open our mouth and begin to pray and say, Father, even as I forgive this person today, I ask for everything that was lodged on my life as a result of the hurt, the pain, the unforgiveness to fall off right now in the name of Jesus. Let's go on and pray. Maka supra tali vasinde, meza kalira ande balakuza saya mande, rebaklina kalia mande broko Mahande <laughs> <laughs> 
Whatever it is, whatever it is, however bad it was, oh, ask God for the grace, ask God for the grace to let it go. We might be saying, oh, we want to, but we still don't have the strength. Ask God for the grace. Ask God for the grace. Makasuria Belekina Monta. Is it something a trusted member of the family did to you? Is it something a parent did to you? A friend. Masogo Brekete. Let it go today. Put it at the feet of Jesus. Let him handle the pain for you. Let him handle the hurt. Forgive them genuinely from your heart. And ask God to take away everything that this unforgiveness was able to sneak into your life. Masalia Katabelia Mandelibro Kotoma. Zomaleke Tekete. Maveni Baraka Tolimasia Kondavaya. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You see, you, you guys are here and you, you know, you guys are familiar with Damola's uh, story that he keeps telling us uh, from time to time, how there was a person in his church that, you know, he had had a falling out with, well, not necessarily falling out, but the person was disrespectful to his mother, like disrespectful beyond words and literally publicly. And, you know, obviously that thing, you know, hurts you, it, it gets in your heart. But the thing is, he didn't even have, he wasn't able to do much or say much at that time because, you know, the pastor stepped in and all of that. And at the point where we're talking, um, you know, we're going through our uh, premarital counseling, um, I brought it up, right? Because I was like, okay, I can tell that this thing, you haven't let it go. But you know, the thing is, he himself at that point in time did not realize that he had not let it go. Because you know why? Because when I brought it up, whoo, this thing, it was like I opened a furnace. Like, and the thing that was interesting was that he himself did not realize how much he was still holding on to this thing. Why am I saying that? Because it's, the Bible tells us that the heart of man is deceitful beyond anything. The heart of man is deeply deceitful. That's why I'm, I'm, I, I gave that example because in your mind you'll be saying, "Oh, I'm you know such. I don't I don't keep things. You know I don't hold things. You know I'm such a good person." But the heart of man is deceitful. Who can know it? That is the question. Who can know it? So even you don't even know what your what is hiding in your heart. That's the truth. Even you don't know what is hiding in there until the perfect situation, until the perfect storm, you don't know what is hiding in your heart. So he was walking around thinking, okay, well, I've let it go. The pastor has settled the matter. We've all let it go and everything. But when it was brought up, his reaction betrayed him to himself. And then he realized, oh my goodness, this thing was still inside my mind. Though. And it was at that point he had to now willingly put it down. So you're here, you're thinking, well, I've released this thing, I've let it go, and all of that. But your heart, your heart knows the truth. Your heart knows the truth. Your mouth may be saying one thing, but your heart knows the truth. So it is my prayer that if you are dealing with that situation and the thing has stayed in your heart, that you receive the grace on the altar this morning to truly let it go. As we pray this morning, I know that the reason that the Holy Spirit has brought it up is so that you can all you can receive that grace this morning. It won't be something you're trying to do in your effort. You read books, 10 steps to forgiving people, how to know you are truly forgiving. Let me tell you, the Holy Spirit can't do it. That's one of the things that I, I'm so thankful to God for is many times if the thing can just be highlighted, I may do it in tears, but by any means, I understand that my fellowship with God is so important. So I let it go. I let it go. I have developed a, you know, a, a, a behavior with God where I'm willing to sit with him and talk about it. Not come there and be like, oh, I'm just this wonderful person. Mm -mm, I let it go. So we see in the Bible, the parable of the servants, the one who the master forgave him, but he didn't have the mind to forgive other people. That thing traps you. That thing locks you down. 
So we come here, we're making certain prayers, but it is what has been brought to my understanding that could it be that many of the prayers we are making, oh yes, we come on the line, we do all these prayers and tearing down altars and whatnot, but could it be that these things that you're praying about, that your fathers did because you know one of the things that we usually do when we come to make those prayers is that we're praying a prayer of repentance oh father we repent father we repent could it be that despite the number of father i repent prayers that you are making that you are still being held by someone that you have not forgiven so you are here asking god to forgive you and your family of sacrificing you know uh virgins however many years ago you are here asking God to forgive you and your family of being the ones who used to hunt down missionaries that would come from Europe to spread the gospel and kill them and use their blood to do sacrifice. You're asking God to forgive you of these kinds of things. Yet you, you, are, you are unable to forgive somebody who maybe broke your heart. Maybe somebody who cheated you, somebody who did something. Let us be very aware of what we're doing. Let us be very aware. So yes, we want to come and say we repent of this. God forgive my family for doing this and that. But is there someone you're holding in your heart? Because the Bible lets us know that it is as we forgive that we receive forgiveness. Never forget the order. It says forgive us as we forgive those. That's the order. That's the order. So please don't forget. Don't forget that at all. This thing was very... We're going to pray. There are people who have hurt us. And you can say you're not that kind of person. There are people who have hurt us. And that's why you'll notice that when we come to pray and we're like, oh, you know, whoever is doing stuff, the, 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 the limit of what I, you know, raise in prayer is that the Lord judge them. Is that the Lord judge them. But you will not see us gather here as people who are saying, such and such a person, let fire fall on you, let the thunder of God kill you, or uh, whatever your name is, you know, let, no, it, it won't be that. My own is to hand you to God. God understands the judgment. There was somebody who did something to me recently. It was deep and it was dark. And I would not have known that this person attempted to hit me in that way, not physically. If the spirit of God did not open my eyes, if the spirit of God did not open my eyes. And as I took the prayers, again, like I said, per usual, I just, you know, I'm not going to say, actually, to be quite honest, I was really livid at that person. So I was saying, <laughs> I was like, you know, that person, let God find the person, blah, blah, and all of that. Typically, I'm like, let the judgment of God, you know, address the situation. If there's a person who gets caught up in that judgment, that's between them and God. That's not my problem, right? But I was honestly um, upset. And I let it go. Do you know, I even forgot that this thing happened you know, between, like, I just made that prayer in my, you know, personal space and all of that, and I just, like, canceled everything and all of that, and I move forward. Only for the next day, I'm, I'm you know, in, in this um, night vision, and I literally saw this whole thing happen. It was like we were in a court setting, and this person was obviously found they were guilty, right? So they were printing a whole list of things, a whole list of things that was the person's offense, because what they did was, and I was there like, yes, Yes, this person did me wrong. So yes, let them print it. Let them throw the book at this person. Throw them under the jail. I, that, that's how I felt. And I saw this person looking so downcast, looking so... And I was like, are you now being sober when you did it? You know, that was how I felt, right? Like, don't make any sober faces here. You know what you were doing when you were doing it. Blah, 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 blah. And this person was trying to look for a way to escape. And I was like, no, they must not escape. And everything. <laughs> Only for this person to come to me and touch my hand and be like... God has judged them. You have been recompensed. God has fixed the thing for you. Step out of the way and let them go. And I was shocked. I was shocked because I said, what? I was thinking this person must be done on that. Da, 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 da. And this other individual comes to me and tells me, the matter has been judged. You asked for judgment, has it not? The matter has been judged. God has stepped in. He has avenged you. He has refunded you. Everything has been done. So why are you still pressed about this person? Step out of the way. Let them go. You know why? Because when God decides to give judgment, it is up to him how he, how he delivers it. Some of us are still upset because the person who was revealed to us as the cause of our problems has not yet dropped down and died. Some of us are still stuck because the person who we saw, in quotes, in the spirit as the source of our problems has not yet dropped and died. 
and because you you have decided to be a judge on that matter god will have to leave you there so continue judging it continue judging it then since you know best but the bible lets us know that god is the one who judges and guess what he may judge that matter and decide that that person's time is up but guess what he may judge that matter and decide that that person is giving more time so that they can repent but you can't focus on anything because you are praying that fire must eat them up in their bed as they are sleeping i was a little embarrassed when this thing was brought to me because in the i was just like this is the courts let's pack them to the jail straight but the holy spirit said step away you've done your own you've reported the case didn't you is it not even still us that revealed to you what this person did you've reported the case we've handled you we've settled you everything is done leave this person alone in god's hand and i and i stepped out of the way like that and that was the end of it and then i understood what the holy spirit was telling me you have to learn to release unforgiveness towards people so that the things that belong to you won't be held up listen i god oh god the dealing and the thing i've had to learn from this thing is deep you have to learn to release people so that your own things don't get held up let them be let god decide what is good for them what he wants to do for them but don't sit down there waiting that until this person dies no you see that's the thing that blocks some of us spiritually that is the reason god will not trust some of us with spiritual sight no matter how many hands are laid on your head because your heart has been shaped in the way of unforgiveness and so god knows that if he starts showing you these people you might get offended that god is not fast enough and show up in their house with the, with an actual cutlass so that's why you are praying you are mounting up and your eyes are still not open because god knows he can't even trust you with that level of detail what will you do when god points you and shows you the face of the person that is attacking you can you move on with your life or will you be packed there that you cannot advance until that person dies? That's why some of us don't have our eyes open. That's why. So you will continue to be praying and praying and praying. Lord, let me see. Let me see. And it's, like, it's for your good that I won't let you see. Because you will find yourself in a place where you've committed a crime that they may have to come and arrest you for it. Or you are thinking you will not go and fight them in physical. We know of people like that. Maybe a prophet told them, oh, it is this person in your family that did that. Then they took the fight to that person's door. And hey, you are the one. Foolishness that then makes the matter worse than it was in the beginning but that's why we're here today letting go of every seed of unforgiveness everything so the next prayer i want us to pray because i think we pray the prayer of unforgiveness the next prayer i want us to pray is the part that is dependent on what we've just done father i come before you if there's anything that i have done if there's anything that my family has done anything in my bloodline that is representing a point of accusation that the enemy is using against me as i'm coming before you and i'm praying and i'm seeking your face on xyz if there's anything that i have done that my family has done that is, is a valid enough case that the enemy is holding against me father i come before you asking for forgiveness even as i truly and sincerely have released everyone that hurt me, that offended me, that did me wrong, whatever it may be, as I've released them today, Lord, I come before you, let the mouth of the accuser, let it be silenced, and I ask that you forgive me today of everything that whether it's me or my family has done, even as I am seeking your face on this and this and this matter. Let's pray. You understand what I'm trying to say? It's a little hard to phrase, but you know those things that you've been praying to God for that feel like they've been held up in the spirit bring them before god today lord forgive me and let everything that belongs to me be released let my things be released to me, even as i secure forgiveness before you lord Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. 
fully and truly repentant, we let go, not superficially, but from the bottom of our hearts, from the core of our being, even as you have helped us and given us grace, we release everyone. And Lord, we ask that we, we receive forgiveness of you, even as we have forgiven those who sinned against us. Lord, we ask that we receive forgiveness today and every accusation of the enemy against us falls off, falls off, falls off. It becomes invalidated today. The voice of the enemy against us is invalidated today. Even as we forgive and receive forgiveness of you, the accusation of the enemy is invalidated today. Everyone present on this call who has been under this hold of accusation and as a result of it, their prayers have been stuck. Answers to their prayers have been stuck. Father, let there be a release. Let there be a release. Let there be a release. Amali kaveri amonda shalaki names kalori revile penena sonteli akambe. Let there be a release. Let there be a release. Let there be a release. Maya gadakato. Everyone on the call today who has been experiencing delay in their breakthrough, delay in their seasons, delay in their answered prayers because of the enemy's accusation due to unforgiveness. Father, let all such accusations drop today, even as we forgive those who trespass against us and we receive forgiveness from you Lord for every trespass that we have committed against you every trespass that our family has committed against you every violation that has been registered against us in the spirit we receive forgiveness and let the chains of delay be broken let every held up answers be released in the name of Jesus Oh Lord, we ask that we are truly repentant this morning and that everything that belongs to us be released to us in the name of Jesus. No more delay. No more money. We take back every ground that we unknowingly yielded to the devil by unforgiveness. Every ground that we yielded to the enemy in this matter of this warfare we've been in in this matter of these prayers we have been making every ground that we unknowingly yielded to the enemy due to unforgiveness we take it back we take it back we take it back in the name of jesus we release everyone by the power of god we release everyone by the grace of god and we ourselves receive forgiveness of our father Mende supra de Gatiano. Meka Berino Santalia Cambre is Combre di Vafali Catalia say in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. Oh, thank you for bringing us together this morning. I have done even just as you have asked. I only do that which you have asked of me. What you said this morning is that there are many of us who are things are held up because of unforgiveness. And so Lord, even as I've come before you with the people today and we have prayed and released every unforgiveness that we've been holding on to, Lord, I ask that those whose things have been held up, those who have been experiencing delay in answered prayers, those who have been experiencing prolonged warfare as a result of this unforgiveness, Father, let it all come to an end today in the name of Jesus. Every delay that people have been experiencing as a result of unforgiveness, let it come to an end in the name of Jesus. And Lord, the things that have been held up the things that have been released but were held up father let there indeed be a release today in the name of jesus lord we come before you and we truly from our hearts forgive everyone 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 because if the lord can forgive us of our own issues of our own you know sin then we can forgive those who have done wrong against us. So we come before you and we forgive everyone from our hearts. And so let every accusation of Satan that has been standing between us and the things we have been waiting for, let those accusations drop. Let those accusations be invalidated today in the name of Jesus. And let there be a massive release, massive release of answered prayers, even as we release every seed, every trace, of unforgiveness in Jesus' name. Lord, purify our hearts, purge our hearts, and let it be pure before you. 
free of unforgiveness of every and any kind in jesus name we pray amen thank you lord for in jesus name we have prayed